again hi everyone hi uh, good uh, this is good okay uh, i think uh, uh, before i start uh, let's this make this session interactive i, I just don't want to talk over and over uh, you can stop me any time and i am happy to answer your questions as well or you know i will try to uh, ask you questions in between okay yeah uh, with that let's get started so uh, i'll be talking on uh, AWS Cloud Automation uh, with the Terraform and uh, Jenkins. Uh, can I ask you guys uh, how many are using Terraform today? Oh, that's awesome. I think I have a right audience. And how many of you using uh, Jenkins? Uh, oh, pretty, pretty awesome. Okay, so this, uh, this session is aiming to automate AWS Cloud uh, platform end-to-end. Uh, -end. So with, with a single click, you can provision hundreds of resources. Uh, with a fully integrated at the same time uh, you know you can you can uh, uh, give a self service facility to your developers or the end users okay uh, before i jump into the actual content so uh, just a little bit about me uh, my name is ashok and i'm i'm a one of you like uh, tech engineer uh, my passions like uh, if you look at here uh, these are these are few but yeah there are many so I mainly focused on cloud, cloud engineering and DevOps practices. Uh, I am also uh, one of the community uh, foundation member for FinOps. That's why you will always see uh, talking cost optimization for cloud. And also I'm uh, more into security. So my solutions, my talk will involve the security. Uh, how many of you from uh, cybersecurity? Oh, good. Okay, this is for you guys. Uh, uh, this solution helps developers to self-serve and security guys to control all the changes on the infrastructure. At the same time, cloud engineering platform teams to produce more modules just instead of provisioning the infrastructure, right? So let's get started. Uh, the key takeaways from this session is, uh, you know, you will be knowing why you need to build a custom solution when there is a lot of SaaS products are there. One of the SaaS product is Terraform Cloud, right? But why you need to build you know, your own solution with the uh, Terraform and Jenkins like open source tools, right? So I, I will be talking on the common security considers to build your own solution. Uh, uh, how many are from uh, FSI or the financial industry? Good. So if, if we know, right, so probably uh, MS, uh, MASTRM guidelines for the cloud, public cloud. So you always need to have, uh, uh, so you always need to have certain uh, considerations when you are using any product, right? So I'll be talking on those considerations in that. And then uh, how, you, how you can enable uh, self-service uh, with us, uh, your ISC, for example, uh, Terraform, but you can also use CloudFormation, right? But yeah, uh, I'll be covering only Terraform today, but this, it can be covered uh, with uh, any ISC tool, right? So then uh, I'll be walking through the tech stack uh, which components or which AWS services you can use to build your own automation platform and, and the architecture, reference architecture, uh, probably for production grade uh, with a multi-AZ and you know the scalability and uh, high availability per perspective. Then the branching strategy uh, for multi-accounts, uh, as Chetra mentioned, right? So when you have a cloud center of excellency or you know the control tower, you're probably spinning up multiple accounts for a project or a BA, uh, business unit, or probably for some of the teams, right? So how can you quickly provision resources on that, right? So it's always a day one pain point, right? So we will be covering how you can strategically plan your branching strategy so that multi-account provisioning can be made easy, right? Then uh, along with that, there are certain guardrails and uh, best practices uh, to use the solution, right? So with that, uh, uh, as I mentioned, this this talk is more on you know the people who involves day-to-day uh, -day operations, right? So cloud team, uh, probably if you are a startup company or maybe you are a big big firm, uh, you have a duties of segregation. You want to do only your job, and then uh, you just getting a flooding with a lot of cloud infrastructure request, right? With the, with, which is a repeated task then uh, uh, probably you are just engaged only for provisioning infrastructure, but rest of the security will be managed by security guys 
or database guys right some of the uh, components may be managed by different team right how can you manage all those things in a most effective manner uh, probably if you are looking for a, a self service a manner for a developers so one of the common ask from developers always right say why i need to wait for you to provision infrastructure right always they ask okay can i able to provision my infrastructure right but yes you can give but then the security guys comes into the picture no 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 i will not tell you because there could be a risk and uh, you know security concerns may come yes with this solution you can actually bring uh, all parties together and you can uh, you know create a common pipeline for everybody in organization probably you have uh, here i just mentioned only three people but it can be for more people you can bring into this uh, same platform and you can make them as a you know accountable person or the responsible person for their uh, resources provisioning or the modifications right uh, as i mentioned like security guys right always uh, you know they they'll come after cloud team or devops team right so yeah you can you can collaborate with them they're always with a we, it is like a track uh, if both teams are running then you can succeed right so you can actually onboard them collaborate with them then explain uh, how you can automate uh, all their concerns you can codify and uh, you can use iac to codify all the policies all the compliance rules then you can uh, build the solution so uh, as i mentioned uh, these are the uh, common questions uh, from a management perspective or the security perspective or the uh, cloud engineering perspective every organization uh, mostly the big firms like uh, financial industries will will have these questions uh, if you look at the persona uh, sorry uh, if you look at the first one uh, can anybody guess uh, who can put that question uh, this one it can be from uh, cloud team right so we want to maintain standards or we want to maintain policies across the uh, their cloud environments right and the, the second one can i can anybody guess yeah so probably from uh, your uh, developers or your product owner or the management they always run want to run the business as per as quick as possible right right so how can we get the all this uh, then the third one will be always uh, as i mentioned uh, our dear friend security guys so they always want to maintain security and compliance without exposing the organization into risk or compromising any of your uh, you know environments or not to introduce any vulnerabilities right so these are the common considerations for building a common uh, your own solution yeah so uh, with that let me bring into the uh, so these are uh, basically from uh, ms trm uh, guidelines i took uh, uh, why you need to build uh, you know your own network or uh, your own policies authentication and authorization data protection and artifact manager so these are the commonly asked or common guidelines that every form need to be followed as a financial industry uh, until unless you know you are completely going after a saas product which has flexibility to have your own authentication with your uh, probably active directory or sso or your uh, adfs and you have something like you can control uh, with your own policies maybe with the uh, iams and all but most of the saas products which not compatible for your organization needs so how can you uh, you know bring all this into a solution that can fit for your needs correct so uh, so we are going to answer all these uh, uh, requirements with the Uh, the custom solution that we are talking today uh, anybody have any questions uh, let me give a pause uh, let me see anybody has okay okay so uh, i think uh, i'll be not covering what is uh, terraform and what is infrastructure as a code i believe everybody aware so uh, one of the uh, i think all are cloud right so mostly everybody is practicing cloud so uh, how many are following abs guidelines association B banks of singapore okay uh, or mstrm ah, okay good so one of the uh, strongly recommended method for 
provisioning or updating your cloud infrastructure is via infrastructure as a code. You should not go and do manually in, from the console, right? Uh, of course, uh, earlier I also did manually in a console, but yeah, I eventually moved to uh, automating the stuff. So how many are still uh, you know, provisioning resources in console? I think this will help you to uh, you know, bring your approach from doing manually to automated way, right? So uh, as an automation, right? So uh, infrastructure as a code, you have various tools in the market. Uh, AWS has its own tool, CloudFormation. Uh, but widely used one is uh, Terraform. So we will be covering that uh, as a uh, solution stack. So uh, when you have a cloud engineering team and who will be responsible for provisioning your infrastructure, right? So uh, probably if, if it is a one guy or multiple guys, they will be writing a code and then pushing into one person control system or the repository. From there, they will be you know, running some commands. Uh, most of the cases, you know, they are also running commands in their local laptop since the code is there, right? Uh, but how, how scalable is that? When you have a multiple people, so then you will bring in some version control system to you know, have multiple people to commit the code or the changes to be applied, right? And then you will be uh, applying that into uh, target environment. So this is simple. So everybody knows infrastructure is a code, as simple as that. But what if that is scaled to multiple environments uh, as previous speaker told right so we have a control tower right what it does basically you can provision multiple uh, accounts organizations with the minutes of time based on your needs right but how difficult when you are trying to onboard a project into you know all these accounts probably you have a security account and uh, our security team says okay all the kms keys goes there right or probably your you know, uh, database teams, uh, network team says, hey, you need to create all the subnets into network ac account, then share with the target account where you are going to deploy your workloads, right? So that's the main concept of, uh, uh, you know, the landing zones and the control tower, right? So, but whenever there is a new account comes, how quickly you can provision your infrastructure? That matters, right? That matters because business always waiting for you to uh, provision in the infrastructure and the developers are waiting for you to deploy their code. Right? So that's the whole point uh, how we are going to uh, cover uh, in this uh, demo. If I time allows, I will be covering that. So uh, with that, let me uh, bring in the traditional way. Uh, I think everybody knows uh, uh, where it started the cloud journey, right? From console to you know one person running uh, CLI commands from their ISC tool. From there now, automation with uh, some pipelines. From there now, we everybody is expecting self-service portals, right? The self-service portal. So uh, let's see if you are a one single team responsible for cloud uh, infrastructure provisioning and operations, you will be having a lot of mess, uh, uh, you know, the tickets, right? So probably you, are, you will be receiving uh, 10 requests in a day and the 10 requests into 10 services, right? 100 services you need to provision. Uh, if it is a small team, how can you, you know, boost your productivity, right? So you can't because all the projects are waiting for you to, uh, you know, kickstart their journey, correct? So uh, with that, probably uh, you are maintaining your security and guardrails and you are, you are fully accountable for what you are provisioning and what you are, uh, you know, uh, spinning up and you have full visibility. The problem with uh, uh, self-service portal or the self-help self model, you don't know what developers are provisioning, right? So uh, the moment you have given access to them, they can provision whatever they want, right? So probably the, whatever the business is need, right? So with that, how can you enable securely to give access and ensure there is no vulnerabilities are introduced or your organization is not exposed to any risk? And you will be putting, you know, controls at the same, and you are just dedicate delegating the uh, responsibility to them, and also you will be there to see what's their provisioning, correct? So, so this is a new approach uh, what everybody is uh, looking for and uh, the market is looking for. So, we will be covering that how you can give your developers to provision your infrastructure. Right? So, with that, let me pause here for a minute and uh, see if anybody has any. 
uh, questions or uh, you know queries anybody so yeah if not then yeah let me continue uh, so with the with the new approach the benefit is your developer can provision your infrastructure okay but he is not provisioning by his own code as a cloud engineer or cloud operation team you will be writing your modules you will be maintainer for it and you know what needs to be there or what access can be given to developer or how the resources you want to provision probably you are also onboarding a security team or networking guy uh, what is their activities along with the pro, uh, infrastructure provisioning you want to pump in all your security policies yeah that can be do uh, just collaborating with your internal team right again that can be via, via some policies or the policy agents right so uh, so with that let me bring in the how uh, this is one of the approach but yeah there are various models available so uh, with this you can enable you know the automation with the self service and self help model and you can bring in lot of parties into your stakeholders or probably your developer security team network team and whoever uh, have a shared responsibility into the cloud right as i mentioned uh, always it start with one guy uh, or as a cloud team or cloud guy who is responsible for uh, provisioning and maintaining a cloud infrastructure right so then uh, you will be designing a modules Uh, modules are nothing but the way you want to provision an infrastructure variableized way you are putting all as a stack uh, uh, with all the integrations mapped into one to one right and probably you are also putting some guardrails uh, around it security policies embedded it right then you can also maintain baseline configuration uh, uh, this can be your you know sensitive information uh, which role you are using which policies you are using or uh, which controls you are putting so that so you should not give to access to developer yeah so that can be maintained in other repository where it can only accessible for your orchestrator right so then uh, you can bring in your uh, uh, security guys or sre guys or platform team or somebody who wants to automate their job along with the cloud let's say if i want to provision ec2 instance so there are lot of dependencies are required right so one of the dependency can be network right so if there is a dedicated network team who responsible for creating it right so you can also bring them and uh, see what how they want to see their uh, network to be looks like right so you can actually codify all those uh, requirements or the standards what they are maintaining right and then you can release the module with a combination of your infrastructure and the dependencies the dependency can be uh, im roles im policies or uh, or the some agents like new relic and all this stuff you can codify the installation steps then release the module since the modules are there now your developer can come and consume those things right so this can be in a uh, typical developer way you can come to the repository and uh, read uh, check the readme file or you have a portal where you have mentioned how to use this module uh, with a given uh, code snippet right so then your developer takes that code and and you will be you know provisioning a one repository for them where to commit the code correct so then once they they made the changes probably the changes can be only on the tf wars right which is equivalent to uh, the build specs or app spec concept in development right so they will they will put up all the requirements in tf wars then they'll combine the module code and the tf wars and they'll commit the code into you know project repository once the pull request is approved uh, here you can impose strong uh, doer and checker policies uh, which every company wants to ensure there is no uh, you know one guy doing everything right so probably if your ju junior dev guy is provisioning or modifying a code senior guy is approving your pull request right this ensures that there is no uh, you know accidental typos and all this will be introduced once your pull request is approved and that will be you know uh, merging with your uh, respective target environment the target environment you can consider as a branch okay i'll be talking about branching strategy later so then that kicks into the your automation pipeline right so we will be using jenkins as our orchestrator to to run end to end automation 
So what it does basically, the pipeline uh, typically have the workflow. The workflow can be the way you want to provision infrastructure. Probably you will be having static code analysis from the checking out the code, right? Then you will be running all the analysis on your code and then you are running some uh, security scannings to find out is there any 0.0, .0 is open or, or your database uh, is public, right? So all this can be scanned uh, with your uh, guardrails and the policy agents. Uh, I'll be talking what what can be used there. Uh, then you can you can also have as a cloud team always want to know, hey, I, I don't want to surprise by end of the month uh, by seeing a you know ten thousand dollars bill, right? So you you can actually actually have a one more uh, step there to find out how much the bill is going to be on by end of the month out of the developer commit, right? You can actually check that. Then uh, you can you can always have a manual approval stage to review and approve the changes. This ensures that you are not, you know, risking your infrastructure. Probably Terraform is a, everybody knows it always maintains the state of the infrastructure, right? If you change anything, some of the resources always will get replaced, right? So, so this this manual review and approval stage can be used for you know your final go you are telling that now it can go and deploy until then your infrastructure is not going to be deployed right so uh, with that uh, it will go and deploy right so this is the typical workflow but there are uh, various steps also can be involved right so uh, yeah so this this can be uh, your self service model as a code development view but i'll be coming uh, to share uh, the portal way of doing it right okay so now you know the uh, the workflow right you know the workflow but you don't know how to build it right which components to use it and uh, what platform and of course uh, this tool is for cloud provisioning right so uh, you can also extend to on premise and your vmware and other environments other cloud but i'll be talking on the aws uh, so you, these are the components that i've been using in uh, uh, you know the cloud automation platform on top of that uh, i'll be bringing uh, the orchestration engine which is a combination with terraform and jenkins and tfsec and infracost uh, how many are uh, aware of these tools probably tfsec tfsec Security guys, no? Okay, good, good, uh, good. I think there is, and the infra cost. Oh, good. Thank you so much. Okay, so these are the tools that I have mentioned in my previous slide, uh, where it does all your, you know, the workflow be completed. And on top of that, you design your workflow. This can be fully customized, and these all tools are decoupled. You don't need to worry which tool need to be replaced tomorrow. So probably to, today you are using uh, Jenkins, tomorrow you want to use GitLab, GitLab pipe, CICD, right? You can actually do that. The commands are same that the, the foundation is your Terraform, uh, Terraform IAC code, right? And TFSEC can become uh, replaceable. Today you are using TFSEC and tomorrow you want to something else to be used as a, you know, TFSEC is open source and you want to bring in commercial version, you can actually bring in and plug it in with your solution, right? And the workflow is interesting, right? As I mentioned, uh, always it starts from pulling a code and running, you know, the initialization of Terraform and uh, static code analysis, plan, and out of the plan, you'd want to know how much cost is going to impact and then uh, put the, uh, you know, uh, manual approval gate. Correct. Then after that, it will be deployed. So this is a technical stack. Uh, yeah. Any any questions? I think I'm. I'll be running. Yeah. Please. Is there any other tools other than cost estimation? Uh, at this moment, as uh, open source, uh, we have only one tool. But uh, uh, Terraform has its own tool in enterprise. You can you can actually scan. And this this infra cost has the paid version and yeah paid version and uh, 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 in fact uh, you have open source as well. Uh, it gives you a nice view. I'll show you uh, the slide later. Yeah, thank you for the question. Okay, this is the uh, high level architecture for production grade system. 
where you you can give your developers uh, as a access from your ADFS or SSO within your organization and you will be having all the security consideration which I mentioned in my previous slide right so your encryption addressed with the KMS secrets will be managed in secret manager uh, your private repository in code comment right SQS SNS for webhook uh, how many are uh, using webhooks in uh, Jenkins uh, is that with the AWS yeah uh, everybody knows there is no webhook as a native but you can do with a customization of your lambda and SNS and also you can do another way which is SQS and SNS right so this is the uh, another uh, way to do it uh, to automate end to end the moment developer commits the code the pipeline will kick in right and the flow as I mentioned so you can have one common uh, tier bars where you want to maintain your common infrastructure probably which role to connect which environment and the which VPC to be there so these all can be your uh, infrastructure uh, uh, related data and this project code is always have the project related thing this uh, tier bar can accessible to developer you can modify whatever you want but those can be override with this let's say you want to you know uh, change the IP address of something right so 0.0, .0. .0. how can you override the developer uh, thing right so this this common tier bars you can always have a multiple uh, iPhone var flag with your terraform plan command or apply command then it will override it right so then your code is just deployed into target environment right so this is the interesting part uh, where you can have a multiple environments and uh, multiple uh, accounts uh, when i say uh, environment it can be multiple accounts or in a single account multi environments right so you can have a branching strategy like this always there will be a pull request and that will be approved then the static branches will be representing to your actual environment right uh, then uh, the, the moment the code changes in dev the dev environment will be deployed that can be mapped one on one with your pipeline right at the Jenkins level so with that uh, I'll be running out of time so let me quickly uh, uh, show you uh, so this is a pipeline but this is not the end so you you can actually integrate your orchestration with your ITSM tool so which is typically you're passing API calls to Jenkins saying that hey my project name is something right and I want to deploy in the target account is ABC XYZ account right and the my web tier it can be any services or you can actually consider these as a approval uh, approved modules right so you will be having front end API gate whatever uh, you just combine it and stack it up as a uh, tier then select that then which which module version you want to deploy right so you can you can give the module version and then that brings the pipeline right so this pipeline uh, is for onboarding a project so not the previous uh, workflow that I have mentioned so always the day one day two job right so you you might have a project to be onboarded with under resources how can you do that right so if you're given a developer to our uh, your cloud team to do that you will take weeks of time to you know codify everything but in a portal way you just selected it and your stacks are deployed and backend logic will be uh, modifies according to your needs uh, this part is interesting right so uh, this is for onboarding your project uh, the way it always starts with uh, ISC repository for them right then uh, configuring a webhook for your repository then downloading a baseline code which you want to maintain in every account commonly right? then uh, you know cloning the repository where you have your stack modules right so which he choose probably from your central module based on the tag that he has mentioned pull the code and add into the project repository then that that creates the branches then you know it all the way it goes and onboards the project so if you look at here within a minute uh, this can be a uh, go two minutes or three minutes you can actually provision entire projects with hundreds of resources with a pre ready for multiple environments right and with that 
it kicks into the uh, workflow since your code is already generated backend and it is added to the uh, project repository right now the project repository had a change which is approved right that kicks into the another pipeline which is our terraform workflow then uh, it, it does all the things uh, probably the security themes uh, they want to maintain i just skipped uh, purposely so that, that this can be another stage for your security guys to see what we are provisioning as a security components in aws your waf or kms or im roles or it can be some other security services right so all this can be flagged here in your plan if any resources with the security probably uh, i have mentioned only three here but yeah you can go the list can be go very long if you want to uh, you know send the notification to your uh, co-fellows right security team to approve it yeah so this is a way you can do that in our pipeline then that once that as approval uh, approval is completed then it goes to cost estimation then the, you will be cost estimation uh, succeed then you will be going one, one final gate as a manual approval right uh, then all the way it deploys then they write the terraform output now the infrastructure is provisioned now your developers need certain artifacts you know what what is my lambda arn it, it is very uh, awkward way you go and see in the console right whatever you have provisioned you can actually send the artifacts directly to the developer mailbox right so the last step does that so whatever infra provision all the data is pumped into his mailbox he can use those to deploy from his ci cd pipeline or maybe sam uh, framework or the serverless framework right yeah so uh, this is the tfx scanning tool uh, which which does the code scanning and always it flags out uh, if any vulnerabilities in your code uh, one of the uh, screenshot here is the s3 bucket uh, which is missing bucket encryption right so which mandatory to have so uh, which which is missing purposely i did so that's why it flagged out and the the pipeline itself it went to end until you fix this issue you won't be able to go further right it's a hard gate for your pipeline even though your developer taking a code from github and adding into their repository this this can be flagged out yes okay and uh, okay so uh, there are uh, best practices i will be sharing the slides guys uh, i am running out of time but i really wanted to show demo i like to give demos uh, but unfortunately no time but yeah i'll, I'll take one of the one minute to show that so i'll be sharing this slide yeah, just you know the go with the god rails and uh, uh, the best practices with that let me bring in uh, my jenkins portal then uh, i'll just show you how how quickly you can provision the infrastructure in live right uh, any questions before i jump into the jet demo probably one or two questions anybody yeah please uh, where do you maintain the common secrets for the jenkins and other stuff secret manager ci uh, yeah secret manager so that's why in my solution stack if you look at uh, uh, one of the service that we are using uh, secret manager so for example as you mentioned right now i need to connect to the uh, infra cost which is outside solution or uh, probably i need to fi i'm firing lot of api calls to the jenkins jenkins again it have a username and token right so where i need to store it is in the uh, secret manager so whenever the pipeline there are a lot of plugins in jenkins that's a good way of uh, having a jenkins is various plugins there is a secret manager plugin uh, which is available you can always get uh, secrets on the flow and you can mask those secrets on your build. you will be not able to see the secrets so yeah i'll be showing that uh, probably uh, if i get time uh, uh, two two more minutes yeah uh, so this is the uh, Can you see, guys? Uh, how many are interested for demo? Uh, by the way, uh, based on that, I'll go with. Otherwise, my co-fellows are waiting. 
Okay, I think there are plenty of numbers. So this number is awesome. Let me do that. Okay, this portal is uh, uh, not the actual one. Uh, I, since I'm working on front-end development, so it is not fully developed. So I'm showing the back-end, uh, the Jenkins portal, which is equivalent to your development, uh, the, the self-help portal. Right? So look at this. So always it start with day one, right? So day one, you are onboarding a project. What all project needs, probably having your user needs to be onboarded, your repository needs to be created, your pipeline needs to be created, some baseline code needs to be added into this you know, repository, right? So all those things, you can be automated with the flow. So uh, with that, uh, just go with this. Can anyone tell me the interesting project name or uh, something? Yeah. Sorry? Cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll be using uh, AWS Community Day. Okay. AWS Community Day. Probably easy. Sorry, buddy. Okay. <laughs> uh, I can use any project, in fact. Okay. So I'm just uh, making relevant to talk where I'm in. Okay. So I'll be taking a project name as this and then probably I have multiple accounts uh, uh, into my environment. I'm also using control tower to spin up and delete the account. So I can choose whatever account I want to deploy my resources. So based on the selection of this, your baseline configuration will kick in. So uh, where I mentioned there will be baseline configuration for every account. What is the role that I need to use? What is the VPC ID? what is the artifacts of the infrastructure, right? All those will be copied into your project repository automatically based on your selection, right? So probably I'll select uh, SpaceX or yeah, I think. Then uh, let's take a uh, front-end uh, deployment. So I just simplified with the three-tier architecture, but it can be your thousands of stacks, right? Modules and the way you select it, the options will pump in. Right? So it goes on, the list never ends. So I have cut down to uh, multiple things, then probably I'll select only front end. So this is where I was mentioned, uh, you can send all the artifacts to your developers or the, the DL who is part of your project. Right? So I, in fact, the project onboarding details also you can send saying that, uh, you know, welcome to XYZ automation, your project is onboarded and these are the code commit repository for you to host your infrastructure code, right? So with that, let me click and there is a build running. So just a minute of time, it provisions all the requirements and also as a initial step, it also kicks the workflow, right? So if you look at in 11 seconds, uh, it has created code commit repository and created a webhook and downloaded baseline code based on the environment that I selected, then cloning the project repository, uh, then creating a branches, adding uh, baseline code, creating a Jenkins pipelines, in fact, and that the all the integrations can be done automatically with the repository and your uh, uh, pipelines, right? And uh, it goes and invokes the pipelines as well once it is completed, right? Yeah, so within a 52 minute seconds, now your uh, ISC details are pumped into the developer saying that, you know, this is the project and this is the repository and it has all the uh, details to be ready for your developer onboarding, right? So the second part, second part is your, your pipeline or the workflow, right? So as I mentioned, uh, this is the project that we have just launched probably it, it might have invoked because as part of my onboarding, I have triggered it saying that, you know, once you add the baseline configuration, just go ahead and trigger it, right? So it is doing all the checks that I mentioned in my previous slides, uh, code scanning, which is, yeah, which is good. Uh, then, uh, yeah, so then it is going and showing the, what is the plan? The plan is, there are 20 resources it's creating, but it can go more. Uh, so I just limited the code. Uh, so there are 20 resources which creating as part of the front end. Uh, by the way, in front end, I have removed CloudFront. CloudFront takes 30 minutes to deploy. 
So I have added API Gateway, Lambda, and Allo World with uh, some of the sample code. Right? It can be anything. Right? And all the tags are also there. If you look at the tags, so you, you are ensuring your billing is going to be by end of the month is uh, efficient and accurate. Right? So then, yeah, and uh, sorry, security buddy, I purposely uh, skipped it. But there is a security services in this IAM role, which required for Lambda to run basic execution role. Uh, so that stage I skipped because uh, you know I just want to go directly to the manual stuff. Even though if a security team is not part of your game, you can actually have one manual stage where you will be having a hard control to approve the infrastructure. Right? Then the moment you have it, just approve it and you can do that. Just yeah, yeah, done. Oh, sorry. Okay. So this is the typical way uh, to deploy, and the moment. Uh, uh, you can you can have a, approvals ready and just go ahead and deploy it. So that's it. So uh, it it does all the infrastructure provisioning in a minutes. So sorry for uh, over time. So I have a lot of content to share. Thanks, thanks, buddy. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ashok, for the content. And guys, please reach out to Ashok yeah. for any support.